Okay, let's just practice a couple of things from the last two videos. Um, so here you see three equations. You should look at each one and decide, um, do you know what shape this is? And do you know any important things about the shape? So pause the video, decide what you think. Okay, so this first equation has no solutions because if I move the 10 over to the other side by subtracting 10 on both sides, you get equals negative 10. And if you imagine plugging in, it doesn't matter what values you plug in for x and y, um, you're going to subtract some numbers from them and square them, but you know that the output of a squared term is always positive. So it's not possible to add a positive number and a positive number and get negative 10, which is just another way of seeing that there are no points of any kind which would satisfy this equation. Oh, sorry, when I say of any kind, I meant any, any real numbers. Um, if you, there are complex numbers that you could substitute in that would satisfy this equation. Okay, so, all right, so, the, so this first one has no graph at all because there are no points on the real number plane that satisfy the equation. What about this one? So this one has the form of a circle, and the circle is centered at 2 comma 5, and its radius is root 10. Um, and we know that from, from the last video. Okay, what about this one? This one uh, has a form that's similar to this one, but you'll notice there's no y's at all. This is, I've only had, I only have x's. So if you were to multiply this out, you'd end up getting some kind of quadratic equation for x. Um, so you know that, well, so there's a couple possibilities. x could have one solution, in which case the graph would just be a vertical line at the solution. It could be that x has no solutions, in which case there's no graph. Or it could be that x has two solutions, in which case the graph of this would be two separate vertical lines at each of the solutions for x. So I think the big takeaway here is, uh, like, the details matter. You can't just look at a thing and say, oh, I sort of vaguely remember what that looks like. you got to really know kind of what each piece means and where it comes from and why. Okay, so here we've got an equation. Um, go ahead and try and complete the square on this and figure out what kind of curve you think it is. You know, what, or I guess we've only decided it could be a circle or not a circle. Um, but decide if you think it's a circle or not a circle. And if it is a circle, what do you know about it? Go ahead and pause the video. All right, here we go. So if I complete the square on this side, I've got x minus 3 squared. That's going to introduce a positive 9, so I'll subtract 9 to compensate. Here, this is going to give me y plus 2 squared, which is going to introduce an additional 4, so I'll subtract 4 to compensate. And I've still got my minus 3 over here. So if I combine all my constant terms and move them to the other side, I'll have x minus 3 squared plus y plus 2 squared equals 9 plus 4 is 13 plus another 3 is 16. Um, so I recognize now that this is a circle whose radius is 4 that's centered at 3, negative 2. So if I was going to try and make a very rough sketch here, Here's the center, it's, if it's radius four, that means it's gonna go from like here to about up here, and then way down here, and then kind of over here-ish. Okay, well mine, mine ended up looking a little bit more like an ellipse, but um, you know that's approximately where it would be.